Con tue parole. Is that right? So right. Chi sono? Too high. No, no. Chi sono? Excellent. So what's the project? La Ida. I had. La Ida. No. La Ida, la Ida. La Ida. La Boheme. Yeah. <laughs> I get confused because there's all these Italian people on set that I, I'll turn around and speak Italian and someone who doesn't understand it. They're like, oh, wrong person. How come you speak Italian? Um, my mother's Italian and she married American and moved here. Huh? And I lived in Italy for about, um, I think, six years on and off. Yeah. I've been there ever since I was eight years old. Lucky. Yeah, so I'm, I'm the imitation Italian because I speak it but I don't look at it. You know, so people may always get confused. They don't know. Oh, lucky. What? Shit, let's talk about her. <laughs> yeah, really? That's more interesting. No, 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 no. Um, I just found out this morning that the two of you have worked on a couple of other films together. Yeah. And now we're reunited again. This mm -hmm. is a reunion of the bad guys. Ah. Because um, in Karate Kid 2, you were both bad guys? He was my nephew. He, he, he was playing around with Ralph Macho and I was playing around with Pat Marina. So how did you end up getting together on this show again? Did you Good did looks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> did you know that you were going to both No. Kids? No. got to the set and found out? Yeah, yeah. we threatened uh, Charles Band, actually. <laughs> Physical violence. Spoke so. to him in Japanese. Japanese? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to speak Italian. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> no. So, um, what about what are the two characters that you play in the film? Um, why did you start out? With I'm the general. I'm I'm the the bad guy again. And and me, yes. I'm uh, I'm his goofy sidekick. <laughs> I'm the comic relief. Damn it! Are you? Yeah. Supposedly, man, well, you knock me around. Oh. Shut up, Sing Sing, and all that good oh. stuff. <laughs> so, um, now, did you have the same sort of, uh, like, comic relief type of situation with Friday the No! <laughs> I don't remember the film. Some people laugh. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me feel good. No, we were very serial, uh, serious actors. And uh, it's nice to be here doing this project together, really. It's nice. It's comf comfortable. Well, it's, I, I should I should rephrase that. It's not really a comic thing, but I mean, it's it's more of the relationship is different. He uh, he kind of uh, bosses me around here and there and tells me you know do this or do that and kind of chops me down. But basically, um, well, this is going to be shown after the film, so we're, we're okay, right? So <laughs> it's basically a front, you know. He just does all these things to um, a big affront. Yeah, <laughs> there can be one. Uh, he just basically does all these things to me as a front because he wants them to believe that, uh, you know, we're, um, what? We're covered. We're, we don't want to let them on. We don't want the, the, uh, the good guys to, to know that we're really going to submarine Stick them. it to them. Yeah. The food is great. <laughs> I know the food is great. We have good food, but um, no, as, as opposed to something that's a little with, with less special effects, less science fiction film. What's it like working with robots? I really don't know. I have no idea what the what you're talking about. I know it's in the film, but I we, I don't come in contact with it. I, I'm curious and looking forward to it. I did. Robo jocks with them, and I have an idea of the kind of work that they do, and I, I you know, it's good stuff. So, um, do you have fight scenes in the film, or do you have um, gun shooting, or laser? We have fight scenes. Blaster? We got all of it. At 
do you particularly participate in them? Though? Yeah. He does. I got a fight scene. He gets a stick fight. Who kills you? Who kills me? Drake. It's really uh, Don Michael Paul, who, who's the lead in this. Uh, we had worked together years ago, and he always says to everybody, "Hey, this is my buddy Yuji. Uh, we worked eight. Uh, eight we know each other for eight years." That's what he tells everyone. So it's really funny. Um, yeah, we worked uh, eight years ago on Aloha Summer, which of course Danny was. Hey, hey. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> rock and roll. Okay, so um, tell us again, you already know Don from From a project we did eight years ago called Aloha Summer, which is uh, it's a kind of a family kind of film. And uh, we kept in contact through all these years. And in fact, Don was the one who uh, actually recommended me for uh, playing uh, one of the roles in this film. So he's kind of responsible in a way for me being here. And so it's been a lot of fun. Unfortunately, what's, what's really bad is that Don and I have no scenes together except for the end where he blasts me and there's no dialogue or anything exchanged between the two of us. So I wish there would have been something, but in the end he comes and rescues the girl and blasts me. And <laughs> yeah, Danny, yeah, Danny was uh, uh, a preacher, actually. He played uh, a priest in... in uh, a little scene uh, in Hawaii, and uh, actually he's from Hawaii, so yeah. But it was it was great. It was it's, it's nice to work with Danny. That's this is my third film with him, so it's it's been a real treat for me. Yeah, he's kind of like uh, my uncle, you know, in a way, telling me do this, do that, keeping me in line. So that relationship that you have off screen, it helps you in your the relationship off screen that you have in the past will help you. What was that? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're confusing me. Uh, yeah, actually it does. It, it helps out a lot. Um, you know, we're just like uh, family. And uh, it, it, it helps. Oh my God, they're, they're losing a set. Uh, it helps with our relationship uh, on screen. It really does. So, yeah, in answer to your question, yes. <laughs> No, this is the first one. This is actually the first one. And it's been a great experience. Uh, they're pretty organized, you know, that we get the scenes done and, and we go to the next one. And uh, yeah, Charles and Albert are, are, are terrific to work for. Um, you guys are, are great. <laughs> no, it, the, the crew is terrific, you know, they're real uh, nice people. So, you know, you always hear these horror stories about doing uh, smaller budget films and saying, oh my God, it's, it's scary and all that stuff. But, They've been great, you know. In in terms of doing this, and in, 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 in comparison with doing big budget films, I really don't see any difference. You know, work is work, and and as long as they treat you uh, nicely and, and with respect, then it's great. I mean, I have no complaints. So it's been fun. So um, then you obviously have to work with many, many other people on this crew, but. Um Difference, like since you don't know the director, are you having is it easy for you to work with Albert or Charlie when he comes down? Uh, yeah, it depends what kind of mood he's in. No, I'm just kidding, I shouldn't say that he hired me. Uh, no, actually, uh, Charles has been great. You know, Albert yeah. hasn't been around because I think he's no, Charles, I'm getting confused now. Albert's the pops, okay. Albert's the pops now. He's been here uh, because Charles has been completing uh, another film I guess so Albert's been great he um, is will, always willing to listen to any kind of thing uh, you want to change or you you know he's always there to listen and uh, and he'll try and accommodate whatever needs it need, needs to be met in terms of the character that you're portraying so I think in terms of uh, uh, the actors I think if they come in prepared um, and know exactly you know where they're headed I think he, if you if you talk to him about, you know, I think this would work better, or, or how about if we just lose this and that, he's very good about that, you know, and uh, I think I think a lot of times, a lot of directors they they're not willing to listen to their actors and, and listen to suggestions, so it's kind of unfortunate. But uh, in this case, Albert has been great, so I have no complaints. Uh, 
No, I was here for uh, last week. I worked uh, a couple of days last week, and uh, so you've been around. So I mean, yeah, I've been around. <laughs> so they say. So basically, what I'm looking at is like of all the scenes that you worked on tonight, or or that you might be working on, what do you think might be your favorite scene out of the film? So far, or throughout the whole thing. Well, I think probably the end, the end, I mean, my demise, I guess, is what I'm talking about. When I get blasted by uh, Drake, uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I, I always like doing physical things, and uh, uh, I get to kind of play around with Lita, uh, Barbara Crampton, and uh, it, it should be interesting. You know? It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I studied karate and uh, I studied some kempo and, and some uh, Chinese martial arts, Wing Chun. So I've been accustomed to being around that for a while. So taking hits and giving hits, you know, it's it's kind of fun. Yeah. It's kind of sadistic. <laughs> so something like that you feel would help you in something like being blasted or having to fight. Oh yeah, yeah. All that stuff comes into play. I mean, learning to take hits. It's just as important as, as, you know, being able to dish them out. So it's just the, the selling point, you know, of taking the hit here or there, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, we got a good uh, stunt coordinator here, Chino, so we're in good hands. So we won't get, uh, you know, annihilated. So we'll see. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. That's all Danny stuff, and unfortunately, I don't get to do any of that. Yeah, I'm in the passenger compartment with uh, my my uh, henchman, so to say. And uh, I, unfortunately, I mean, I'd love to do it. This is uh, we got more things going on here. Hey, hey hell, who? No, um, yeah, I don't do any of that. So, I mean, I'd love to. Maybe you could talk to them and, and ask them if maybe they can stick me in there somewhere, kind of in the background, hanging onto a wing or something. Are you are you done with me? Can I get Danny here? I always hate to it. <laughs> oh, I get the bad guy parts. I can growl. Oh, definitely, definitely. There, there, there's, there's a lot of time saved in, in building a kind, any kind of rapport. You know, you just go right to it. And, and it saves a lot of time. Uh, incidentals, if that's the right word. No, it's, that's what I meant by comforting in the beginning. It's, you know. Yeah, it's kind of fun. First of all, let me explain that when we did Karate Kid 2, we were together for four or five months. And it became family. Because it was new for me, new for Yuji, you for Tamlin. And, and we got to know, and it was a nice set. I've been on sets, and I won't mention the names of the project, but I've been on sets where everybody was at each other's throats. So, and that that's the job entails a lot of tension as it is, let alone add to it by personalities, you know, and, the, but we, as you can see, we're loose, we're loose. There's a love there that's very nice. Yeah, that's great. Um, how long ago was that? 86. Well, I'm in it, yeah. I'm driving it. Pardon? Yeah, we've done that too. No.
I know you got. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to go. just do it. No, no, because when we um, when we did RoboJocks, which was filmed in Italy, we did it under Empire Studios. RoboJox was done by, uh, we, were, we did it under Empire Studios, at the De Laurentiis Studios in Italy. And he turned around and bought out Empire, and probably went broke, <laughs> he claims. Too bad, it threw the timing off on the project, the release of the project. But RoboJox still had a pretty good success, even though it was... From what I hear, yeah. Later, I mean, I yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, the disappointment is that if it, if it, if it had come out on time or on schedule, it would have been just prime for the children because the generators and the robots and the toys were, were you know, the big rage. And I think to a degree it still carries over. So we're still on schedule with this project, hopefully anyway. Well, I think with this, see, uh, full moon, crash and burn. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, That's the feeling I have, anyway. Anyway, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, what's it like working with, um, with Albert, the director? Oh, I love him. I love him. We weren't that close, but since uh, getting involved in this, we've developed a, a, a closeness. Yeah. So, how do you like playing the band guy? I love it. It's been working. <laughs> Uh, it depends on who you talk to. <laughs> Don't talk to my kids. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Two. Two? No. They, they must love it. Seeing you They're like totally you. unaffected. Mm -hmm. No. Which is, which is good. You know. So, um, the scene that you do with the, is the martial arts scene? You do martial arts? Yeah. So, how is doing the martial arts? I don't know yet. We haven't prepared for it yet. They haven't choreographed it yet. I'm curious. That, that, stuff like that is always more fun to work on. Isn't it? Yeah, out. yeah. I like to get physical. So, um, out of the whole film of stuff that you've either worked on or are going to work on, what do you think is your favorite scene? This one? Mm -hmm. I don't know yet. We've got some more to do yet. <laughs> Not yet. I'm looking forward to the fight scenes. Of course, I died too, so you know, death scenes are always good. We're in the big fight with the robot at the end. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I don't answer these anymore. Okay.
Quiet, Shh, quiet please. Uh, some cowboy pretending to be. Let me start again. Some cowboy pretending to be a robo jock. Some what? Some cowboy pretend, pretending to be a what? Robot pilot. Uh, some cowboy pretending to be a robot pilot had to pick this afternoon to prove what an asshole he is. Pardon me, miss. Did you call me an asshole? You broke my specimen, you jerk off. Oh, no, jerk off. My grandmother could run that pilot. Cutting. 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 Thank you. Everybody's collars up. Everybody prepped and ready for the jam. All right, stand by, please. Everybody's very quiet. Collars on, everybody's ready. Roll, camera, please. Rolling. Right, speed. We are, we are rolling, yes. We are rolling. Speeding. Game marker. Action. should not move anymore. Nobody moves. Great, thank you. Let's roll camera. Roll it. Roll it. Thank you. 
can yeah. give me real audio problems. Please tell me. Okay. Okay. Um, Robert, uh, tell me what robot uh, wars is well, I, I think Robot Wars is sort of like um, a, a takeoff on this other film they did, Robot Jocks. They had these robots that were fighting, you know, wars. Men don't fight wars anymore, robots fought wars. But now, these particular robots are underground. They've been buried along with other weapons and guns and things. And nobody fights any anybody anymore. But I, as an archaeologist, find out that there's this covering of this stuff called infrasorbate that's, that's in the ground and it's covering up so satellite pictures can't reveal that there are actually weapons and robots and other things like buried underneath the Earth's surface. And these guys, a um, couple of really fine actors, play these two characters, Wally and Singh, and they join up together. They're from some he other hemisphere, the southern hemisphere or something and they plot to uncover all these weapons and take over this one robot that actually is part of a, um, a tourist attraction, a tourist group. They want to take it over so that they can take over this area of the world. So it's a, it's a mega plot. We have a mega plot going on here. And I team up with the character of Drake, played by Don Michael Paul, and we try to overcome what's happening with, uh, with this takeover. We're working here, we're making a movie. There's lots of noise, it's okay. If you can see it. Oh yeah, right. They're almost down there, can move it into place. Okay. Alright, Barbara, tell me about robot. Well, there's a major plot to take over um, this one part of the hemisphere that we're all living in now. And um, we fight to not let these, uh, these guys, Chow Singh and Wally, take it over. I team up with this guy, Drake, played by Don Michael Paul, to stop these guys from what they're doing. They're trying to uncover this, um, this robot and some other weapons that have been hidden underground. And they're hidden by some infrasorbate, which is... I don't know what it is. It's in the future. We're doing a movie in the future. And I'm an archaeologist, and I uncover the, the fact that there are things hidden under there that people don't know about. Now, let's go to the question. Um, I did. I'm sorry. I heard you, and I tried to touch the middle. Oh, my earshot was fine. Tell me about your character. Uh, my character's name is Lita. She's an archaeologist. And this takes place in the future. It's 2041. She's kind of a tough girl. Um, I think it's nice that um, we're doing a movie where women get to be more in control. We're not the foil for the men. And it's, it's nice. I think Full Moon does a lot of movies like that where, where women have more of a powerful position. And I certainly do. I get to hit a couple people in the mouth and wield a gun around. And um, I'm very much in charge. And uh, it's, it's more exciting to play a part like that, I think. Why do you think you have such a following in science fiction? I think the movies that I've been connected with were, were really well done. I'm, the two that come to mind really are Reanimator and From Beyond, and everybody seemed to really like those movies. And uh, I, I think that, that that's really why. I mean, it's, I played an, an actress, I played a part in those two movies that did really well. Well, it's it's difficult to react to anything that's not there. I mean, sometimes you're doing a close up, and and the actor that you're working with, for one reason or another, can't be there. And and yes, you have to act to the robots. And and there there's been times when we've had to do scenes when um, actually they can't even tell me what's going to happen. I go, well, what's, what's going on here? Well, the robots are out here and they're doing this. And I'm like, what, what exactly are they doing? And they can't really tell me yet because it's going to take them a while to put that all together with the miniatures and everything else. It's a, it's a, it's a big production. So we kind of all have to get together collectively and, and guess what the robots are going to be doing and then make our reactions from there. It kind of seems to work when you put it all together, though. It'll be fine. <laughs> Excuse me, we're doing a movie here, in case you hear all this noise. 
So they're building the set as we speak, so pay no attention to that saw in the background. Um, now, is it difficult for you to perform against all these special effects? Oh, no, I love that. I actually really like that a lot. I've had to do, um, when we did From Beyond, I did um, a lot of reacting to these um, fishes and things that were, came out when we went into the fifth dimension in the, in the beyond. And no, I, th I think it's fine. I think um, it's just part of, of what you have to do as an actor. You have to think, you know, what, how am I going to feel if this is happening? You know, and you have to impose that upon yourself. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's a challenge. What kind of character do you have for someone who can't really sort of the personality of your body? Say that again, because I can't hear you. Well, I think every character is different, you know, it depends on who you're playing. I think uh, um, in this particular role of Lita, I'm, I'm much more in control and in charge and carrying the ball, you know. Um, in a movie like Reanimator, I was sort of at the mercy of what everybody else was doing and I was a reactionary character. I'm not so much that in this movie, I, I take action here. Um, in From Beyond, I was much more uh, of a take charge character also, um, probably a little bit more similar, but this, this girl is a little bit more tomboyish, she's a little more tough, um, and she can, she can control herself and hold her own with a man. You know. When you do a film like this, do you feel like a little kid playing the sandbox? Well, it's always fun. I mean, it's pretend. It's something that, that we, we all do when we're growing up. Um, being an actress is is constant playing. Okay. Come, Monica. Un, un po' solo. Perché mi piace la lingua italiana. It's uh, lo stesso di musica. Che bella. Bella lingua, sì. Ah, uh, sì. Uh, ho fatto un film che chiama From Beyond. <laughs> Cinque anni fa, adesso. Mm. No. Ho capito molto, ma um, mi... Um, sometimes? Some, a volte? A volte io non tro, trovero i paroli. Le paroli. No, i paroli. Il parolo. La parola. Oh, le palo parole. Sì? Oh, ok. Mi scusa, sì? <laughs> Ho bisogno di studiare. Ok. All righty. I play a character named Lita. She's an archaeologist in the future. This is 2041. And um, she realizes that underneath this tourist area called Crystal Vista is a layer of infrasorbate. Because she's an archaeologist, she figures this out. So from that, she derives that there's something hidden underneath the earth that they don't want people to know is there. We find out that it's actually guns, ammunition, another robot is underneath there. There is one robot that we have at Crystal Vista now that is um, there to show tourists how it used to be. And they take people for rides, and this is the way they used to f fight wars, as we saw in RoboJocks. Now we don't use that anymore. We don't, need, we don't fight any more wars, we don't have the big robots, but actually it is hidden underneath. And these two guys... Um, Chow Singh and Wa Li threatened to take over this part of the hemisphere where we're living now. So they want to take 
those robots and use them and use the ammunition and the guns. And I hook up with this guy, Drake, and we try to stop all this major disaster from happening. So what do you like best about the character of Leah? That she's strong. She's a strong character. She doesn't take any crap from anybody. And uh, I get to wield a gun a few times with this laser, actually. And I hit a few people when they piss me off. And uh, she's more of a take charge personality than, than usually get to play in movies. Yeah, I remember there's this one scene where uh, you get to get... Uh, Drake. No. Oh. Oh, they took that scene out. It didn't quite fit with the movie. So as, as we go along, sometimes we take things out, we add them in, and that didn't quite work, so we took that out. But you do get to hit I hit Drake, yeah, in the face. That's, that's really fun. The old club goes. So you also go back a long way with Charles Manson. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that was when I did Reanimator with Stuart Gordon directing. And let's see, when was that? 86? I think it was about 86. So that was eight years ago. Doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was. Yeah. And you've also been in a couple other films? Well, yeah, I did um, Reanimator and From Beyond when, when it was under the Empire banner. And then um, I was most recently on a soap opera for a few years. Uh, so... I was only able to do some cameos in a couple of the films I did. I was in Trancers 2, and uh, I played a character who interviewed somebody. I had my own talk show, which is what I had on the, on the uh, soap opera. I was a talk show hostess on that, so that was kind of fun. And then I had a little part in uh, Puppet Master. I don't know which one it was. <laughs> there was a few of them, right? I, I forget which one they... It was one. Yeah, it was one. Puppet Master 1. had a little part in that, so... Uh, yeah, I've managed to keep my foot in there a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's like a family here. You know, we all know each other, and it's fun. And and uh, we have these Italian cameramen, which is great. I mean, when I worked over in Italy, when we did From Beyond, that was that was fabulous. I learned to appreciate Italian food and the conversation of Italian. I learned a little Italian, and now we're working with these guys and. Um, it's a happy group here. It's just so fun and easy to work on these movies with everyone. So the fact that you speak a little bit of Italian, does it help you out while you're on the set? Si, ho capito molto quando tu parlate italiano. Si. When they're speaking sometimes about something that they don't like or they need differently, they feel more comfortable talking in Italian, so I understand what they're saying, you know, and it helps us all. And it helps you understand Oh, yeah. Um, now, in the film Road Wars, <clears throat> Lita meets these guys to break. Very much. Oh. Maybe you can go. I don't know. They're probably going in and out, but I know that there's no uh, Victor working on it. Really? What did he do? It might have been the uh, second unit. Maybe. We had a couple of B cameras days. Yeah. That doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Um, Lita hooks up with Drake in this film. Uh huh. Now, I, Drake is like, for me, he's such a, like, he's the kind of guy that I wouldn't really want to. Oh, he pisses me off, yeah. So, he's a jerk. <laughs> That's why I have to punch him in the mouth. What is Lita seeing him? Well, she doesn't like him in the beginning of the movie at all. He likes her because she's feisty and fiery, and she is her own person. She's very much in control, and she says what she wants to say, and she's very blunt. And she doesn't like him at all because he's the same way, but he, he's just, he's kind of a cad in a way. She thinks he's a cad. She doesn't believe he's, he's coming from any true, real place. And the only way that, he, and because he, he's kind of a rebel, and she sees that in him, but the only way that he proves himself is when, um the bad guys are after us, he kind of comes to everyone's rescue and he, and he mans this... I don't want to tell you the story, but he saves the day for us. And after that, I appreciate him a lot more. So what, what's the relationship between you and Don Austin? Oh, he's such a jerk. I just don't like him at all. He's just... No, we, we all fool around, kid around. Um, and we, ha we have a good time. Yeah. Do you 
with him? Yeah, sure. Yeah, don't don't tell him that. But I think when you have a certain relationship with somebody in your with your character, it sort of comes out naturally anyway. I mean, even off camera while we're waiting for the next shot or we're having lunch or whatever, it bleeds over and it's helpful if, actually if it does if you can keep that going. It's not like you're you're being another person. It's just that it's that underlining um, level of communication that you have that you keep kind of similar to the movie I and it helps me so it helps me to think of him as a jerk no he's not really he's a good guy um, there's also another person that you know personally yes she's standing right here come here Lisa this is my girlfriend Lisa hi <laughs> and, and she's playing Annie and um, she auditioned for a full moon movie and then they asked her if she would audition for a Robot Wars and she said oh Barbara Crampton my best friend is in that and they said oh really so then she came in to read with me and as did a few other girls and she was far superior Thank you. and we had this you know camaraderie going on anyway so she got the part so it's fun to have a friend in real life you know playing with you in the movies doesn't happen all the time. Mm -mm. Do you think your friendship off screen helps the relationship you have on screen? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, actually, I, I think it does. You know, and Lisa and I have a certain dynamic in our friendship that I think works in in the movie also. You know, uh, I, I I have kind of like this motherly thing probably going. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> it's true. Barbara yeah. sort of, uh, and which I must crave because that's that's what I like. I mean, that's why I'm attracted to Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she does, Don't she, talk so see, loud. She's telling me to talk to her. <laughs> she's very loud. This is how she's in the movie. She's loud. She's overbearing. She's too aggressive. And I keep having to tell her to shh in the movie. And even now, I have to tell her to be quiet. She's and too loud. It's so funny because some people I think would get really mad at that you know or that would upset them and they would not like that but I just sort of go oh, well it's just Barbara and I just tell her to shut up or whatever and it, we have a nice rapport I think you know we're able to get mad at one another but if we do we sort of can forgive each other and it's easy I think don't you yeah it's just easy you know I don't expect much out of her she expects a lot out of me you know <laughs> a lot <laughs> no why? Wait, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, she. You know, she doesn't expect anything, and we just, I think, are there for each other. It's nice. So, Lisa, what does Annie think about the fact that Lita ends up with Drake? Oh, she loves it. Oh, she thinks he's cute from the minute she sees him, and she's like, you know, I think all through the movie she's saying, you know, I really think you should take a look at this at this pilot, you know, he's cute, you know, what the heck are you doing? And she's like, no, no, no. And I do that she to Barbara too. She only sees him on the surface though. She doesn't see him underneath for what he really is. Which I, is true. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's Lisa, you know, that's oh, me. he's anyway. cute. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> She's like, Someone Lisa. has to prove themselves to me first, which is kind of true of this character too. So it, it all works. It all works. It's really interesting how it does. But no, she's, I think my character's more sort of guy crazy and just, you know, I think when she finally ends up with him, it's like, Oh, good. Finally, somebody gets him. <laughs> does um, Annie end up with somebody else in the end, or she has her eyes on somebody? Well, she does. You have your eyes on Plunkett. Oh, I have my eyes on Plunkett. I don't end up with him, though. I think he gets a headbutt in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> he gets what? He gets a headbutt with a gun. Oh, does he die? No, he oh. doesn't die. I don't end up with anybody. They kind of, they kind of just uh, keep me celibate in this film. Oh, darn. Which Possibly, is... Possibility, though, maybe for a scene. Oh, there oh, you yeah. go. The Annie and Plunkett show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, All right. Leave I'll leave now. <laughs> yes, bye. bye. <laughs> See, we're really good friends. I worked with Albert Band in From Beyond. He played a drunken guy that that was in the paramedic ambulance. But that was the only time. Not as a director. I know he's done many, many films, but this is the first time. He's very easy to work with, too. You know? That seems to be the common feel because most of the people on the set Yeah, it's very relaxing here. It's no tension ever. What do you think might happen between Lita and Drake? 
Well, let's see. They they I'm could over, they could have children and then they could start their own battalion, you know, and <laughs> raise these little warriors. I don't know. It, I haven't worked with it yet. But they've been telling me about it. It's it's sort of like a little laser gun, but I haven't seen it yet. So you'll have to tune in to see that. I don't know. Yeah, I fire at a few people. I get fired at. I get chased. You know that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's definitely not a very feminine sort of character. Well, it depends on how you define femininity. If you define femininity by by um, wearing a dress and walking around and being very sweet, then no, it's not very feminine. But um, I think all of us females have this fighting side to us that we don't, we aren't allowed to show very often um, in, in this kind of arena. But you know, being a female, Monica, right, that if you're challenged, then you're going to defend yourself. And a lot of times in movies the female gets challenged and the man comes to the defense but when there's no man there you've got to defend yourself and that's what I'm able to do in this movie Um, <clears throat> it's probably, probably the scene where I get to stand up to the guy, you know, and, and, and tell him what he, what a jerk he is, and I get to, you know, pop him one in the face. I don't know, why is that fun? Because girls don't often get to do that sort of thing, I guess. But that's probably the most exciting thing that I've done so far.